What a Sunday that was. Bucks are Super Bowl champions after beating the now ex Super Bowl champions 31 to 9. This is Rondé Barber, and this is your final film session of the 2020 season. So, there was too many good things to talk about. I know that I say that every week, but this was dominating style. This was not a football game. Reminds me of another Super Bowl that the Bucks won. Um, but before we get into this uh, film session, um, I gotta give props to my Uncle Bruce. Uncle B.A., congratulations. All right, here we go. All right, so if you're wondering how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did an about face from the game where they played Kansas City earlier in the year, I'm about to show you. So they learned their lesson and they learned it very quickly. Do not play man to man and do not blitz this quarterback because when you do, you give, you give him easy decisions on where to throw the football. Just pick whoever's covering 10 and throw as far as you want or whoever's covering Kelsey and he'll, he'll find a way to get open. Bucks do a great job here. So they're playing quarters coverage. They played a lot of two high defenses, cover two, cover four, which is quarters, and cover six, which is quarter, quarter, half. This is just plain quarters. But there is an adaption to quarters that I loved in this football game. I got two plays of it right here. Look at the bottom of your screen. Whenever there was one receiver to any side of the formation when they were playing quarters, they locked it. This is Jamel Dean going down on Kelsey to take away any immediate throw uh, in this coverage. And you're gonna see what it does to Patrick Mahomes. So with 35 locked on 87 at the bottom of the screen, you essentially get this safety at the top who is Jordan Whitehead that can really play the other side of the field. You see how he's looking up those three receivers on the other side of the field? And what does this create? It creates a five on three over there. So when Mahomes drops back, he looks at Kelsey. That's not open. Now he's got to go find these other three receivers who are being covered by five defenders. And by that time, this is such a long developing play. Look what Shaq Barrett does to this offensive tackle. And he just, I mean... That's like stealing, it's too easy. Flushes him out, he has to throw it away. And this was a theme that's been very popular amongst the Bucks defense this entire postseason. Red zone defense. Chiefs got down here, couldn't score. Green Bay got down here, couldn't score. Just another example of it. And, and from the end zone, I mean, Shaq had a monster game. He probably could have had three or four sacks. I mean, he went deep into his toolbox and pulled out all his favorite toys and just destroy these offensive tackles. If you don't believe me, let's look at this next play. This is the exact same defense now. They're playing quarters coverage, so you, and you have a locked corner at the bottom of the screen, Carlton Davis down here. So now Antoine Winfield Jr. can look for work on the other side of the field. You're gonna see Patrick Mahomes realizes that this is the same defense. He's gotta look towards the zone, and it's covered up. Tyree Kill in the slot, ball's not going there. And if he, even if he tries to throw it to him late, look at 31, eyeing him up. There's no way he's gonna throw this ball there. The lock at the bottom of the screen is, is locked on. Devin White's got the back man-to-man -to, -man to the bottom of the screen. And then there's just Shaq Barrett at the top of the screen taking care of business against the other tackle. And I love this one most because this is my favorite move that he has. This little jump hop, double chop, and he's on the edge of the offensive tackle and it's over. You know, it's like when, when you're even you're leaving, you hear that on uh, wide receivers, well, it works the same uh, with defensive linemen against offensive tackles. So there's your sack, there's your defense. They dominated the entire game. Fun game for, from my perspective, by the way. Um, other side of the ball. Now, the Bucks did a lot of good things, but one of the things that Byron Leftwich did is he went to a lot of two tight end sets, two and three tight end sets in this game. So what, what that really did was make, take Kansas City out of the defenses that they like to play. They like to play a lot of five defensive backs. Well, I don't know one defensive back in the league, certainly not a small corner, that can cover Gronk. And it, Gronk scores this touchdown here, but this is a play action pass, which they ran nine two tight end play action pass plays on Sunday. That's a lot. For two tight ends, you come and put two tight ends in the game, think you're gonna run the ball, and they play action nine times. Uh, and it really, it was effective. So I, I put this on here because Mike Evans had a quiet night, receivers had a quiet night, really. It was really a tight end and running back catching the ball day. Kansas City couldn't handle Mike, but this is a penalty at the top of the field here. I mean, Rashard Breland's a good corner. That is a foul right there. What's good about this play though, is that Tom, is, as he's locking in on Mike, knows he has great protection. They had one sack, but he had great protection in this game. And look at Gronk work this route. He does a great job losing this DB. This is just a simple little corner route. He feels Tom under a little duress, make yourself available. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Gronkowski's 100th touchdown reception of his career. That is awesome. 14 in the playoffs. From the end zone, again, you'll see uh, just the play action, pulls those linebackers up. The safety, Tyron Matthews, is trying to figure out where he wants to go. Brady throws his eyes this way, Tyron reacts, and then he can have time to find his best buddy in the back corner of the end zone. Uh, again, if you want to see the offensive line, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, all right, last play here. Uh, and Leonard Fournette has had one heck of a playoffs for us. Um, he's, he's been the most effective back. Ronald Jones had a really good game as well, but Leonard Fournette was really, really good in this game, catching the football, and he gets his just rewards on this touchdown. Now, this is a play that you don't see very often from the Bucks. They like to ground and pound the run game. Two, double teams up in front uh, on whoever's in front of them. Not really a pulling type of team. But they ran this play early in the game and got stoned. Kudos for them to going back to it later in the game to score this touchdown. Watch Ali Marpet, number 74. So it's man-to-man -man defense up top. So it's going to be all down blocks from 84, 87, and 73. Joe Haig, who's in as a third tight end. Uh, and then it gets Ali out on the corner and... Uh, that's a business decision by that corner. He does not want anything to do with that big man coming out there. And look how wide open this, this lane is for, for Leonard Fournette. Any of us could have scored a touchdown here. They go quick snap, because this is a big play right after Gronk's big play. You see the down block, down block on the other guy who's playing man-to-man, -man, down block, leave the, uh, the last man-to-man -man defender to deal with 74, and just waltzing into the end zone and waltzing to our second Super Bowl title. Bucks history. Congratulations to the Glazers as well. This was a fantastically built team by Jason Light and his staff. Uh, it was really fun doing film session. Uh, before I leave, I got to give my shout outs at the end of the year to my, I guess, video room liaison, Levi Lewis. Thank you for setting up all my film, sending it to me. My producers, Jake Perron and the wonderfully talented Abigail Derner. You guys are the best. I will miss you. Cheers, guys. Oh, 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 oh,